Okay, good morning everyone. Today we'll look at um, sections, I believe this is 7-2. We'll be beginning, we are beginning the heart and soul of what this chapter is all about, and that is working with inverse relations or functions. So let's take a look at what an inverse relation or function is. So our, our objective today is to graph inverse relations. Um, the short and skinny of it is this, an inverse relation or function takes you back where you started. Okay? So that's what a inverse relation or function does. It takes you back where you started. So let's take a look at graphing inverse relations here. And just to recall, a relation, we looked at this first day of school, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. A function is a relation in which in which each x value has at most one y value paired with it. So to recall, we said for a relation to be a function, an x only has to go to one y. One x can't go to multiple y's. If that's the case, if each x only goes to one y, then the relation is a function. Remember the vertical line test. In any event here, let's look at graphing inverse relations. So here we have a relation. They give us this table for x values and y values. So we have um, the relation when x is 0, y is 2, when x is 1, y is 4, and so on and so forth. So that is a relation. And then we graph it. So 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, 5, 4, 6, and then 8, 7. Well, what is the inverse to that relation? Well, very easy, easy to understand. The inverse to that relation here would be, we say, we just switch the x and y's. So here, my x was my domain, and my y was my range. So all we do is we switch the x or y's or the domain and range. So for the relation, for the inverse to that relation, okay, the y's becomes the x's now. So I want you to notice here that we had 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. That was the range. Now the range will become the domain and my inverse. So now my x's will be 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. We just switch the x and y's. And in here, um, my input or my domain was 0, 1, 2, 4, 8. And so now that domain will become my range and my inverse relation, so 0, 1, 2, 4, 8. Okay, so we say we switch the domain and range, or we switch the x and y's. And then when we graph that, when we graph that, which is what they did down here, so here we have 2 and 0, and then 4 and 1, and then 5 and 2, and then 6 and 4, and then 7 and 8. Okay, so the inverse relation to a set of order pairs is you just switch the x and y's. The domain becomes a range, the range becomes the domain. Switch the x and y's. Right. And one thing about uh, when you graph a relation and it's inverse, we say it's always symmetric with respect to the line y is equal to x. In other words, it's a mirror image. All right. So this was so this was the relation there, and then we graph the inverse relation here. So this was the inverse. Again, you just switch the x and y's. Pretty easy. Switch the x and y's. And so notice again, my range became my domain here. So my range for my relation now becomes my domain and then the domain for the relation now becomes the range. We switch the x and y's. Okay, so now let's look at working with algebraic expressions here, simple ones. So the inverse of adding is subtracting. The inverse of adding is subtracting. Oops, let me go back here. And the inverse of multiplying is multiplying by the reciprocal. 
and to recall that the reciprocal if I have a number like 2 the reciprocal of 2 would be 1 over 2 if I have a number like uh, 3 over 4 the reciprocal of 3 over 4 would be 4 over 3 we just flip it over flip the fraction over 2 I can write as 2 over 1 the reciprocal will be 1 over 2 if I have 3 over 4 the reciprocal will be 4 over 3 and so on and so forth if I have 7 I can write that as 7 over 1 the reciprocal will be 1 over 7 so the inverse of multiplying is multiplying by the reciprocal so let's take a look at some examples here okay so here we have a function or a rule it says take the input and then add 6 to it and that gives us our output or our range so it says take the domain or the input add 6 to it and that gets us our output or our range or y values And I always like to look at that in terms of a function map. So here, my input was 3. And then my rule is to take my input 3 and add 6 to it, and I get 9. Well, my inverse function should take me back from what, to where I started. I started at 3. I want to get back to 3 after I add 6 to it. So, so the inverse function then, the inverse of adding is subtracting, so the inverse function would just be x minus 6. And we use the superscript, okay. Um, you can write the inverse of a function f of x as f raised to the minus 1x. It does not indicate the reciprocal. Okay, so we generally give the symbol for inverse functions as f raised to the minus 1x but that does not indicate the reciprocal okay it's just notation so the reciprocal function for x plus 6 is just x minus 6 the inverse of adding 6 is to subtract 6 and you see if you take 9 minus 6 you get back to 3 you get back to 3. So the inverse function for x plus 6 is x minus 6. Again, the inverse function takes you back where you started. Let's look at the next one here. Use inverse operations to write the inverse of 2 times x. So again, we take the reciprocal. Okay, the reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 over 2. So we'll take x and multiply by 1 over 2 or just x over 2 so the reciprocal so the inverse of multiplying by 2x or multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2 so the inverse of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2 or multiplying by the reciprocal of 2 which is 1 half 1 half times x is the same as x over 2 Okay, and again, in terms of a function map, here again, I start with 7. My rule says take my input, 7, and multiply it by 2, and I get 14. I want to give back to 7, so my inverse function it would be to take my output, which is 14, and divide by 2, and that gets me back to 7. Okay, gets me back to 7. So the inverse function for 2 times x is x divided by 2. And let's look at a couple more. So let's say here I have a rule to take my output input 5 and subtract 7. Well, that gives me negative 2. Then the inverse function would be x plus 7. Because if I take negative 2 and add 7 to it, I get back to 5. I get back to 5. And then lastly, so let's say here I have my input is 12, and my function is to take my input and divide by 4. I get 3. 
Well, the inverse of dividing by 4 would be to multiply by 4, or multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over 4, which is 4. So my inverse function would, would be 4 times x. Okay, so I take 3, multiply by 4x, and then do it get 12. Those are the simple algebraic expressions. The inverse of adding is subtracting. The inverse of subtracting is adding. And the inverse of multiplying is to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. So again, we were multiplying this one here. So 1 fourth times x. That's the same as x over 4. The reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4 over 1. And we multiply that by x. So that's 4x. The inverse of multiplying is to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. Pretty easy to understand. All right, so where does this all take us? Well, <clears throat> we're going to have to work with inverse functions of exponential functions, and we'll learn what those are. But before we do that, I need to review one thing with you, and that's zero and negative exponents. So, so let's review zero and negative exponents. Actually, this material was introduced in Chapter 1, although we didn't spend much time reviewing what was in Chapter 1, so I'm going to quickly go over this, because this is probably the most important mathematical skill you have to do in this chapter, and that's work with negative exponents, the most important. Okay, so here, let's review this. Okay, the zero exponent property says this here. Any number raised to the zero is just one or any algebraic expression raised to the 0 is just 1. So 100 raised to the 0 is 1. Negative 5 raised to the 0 is 1. Doesn't matter. Or I should put that that way. Negative 5 raised to the 0 is 1. Because if I had it this way, negative 5 raised to the 0, you can interpret that as 5 raised to the 0. And then you take the opposite, and that would be negative 1. So I need to put this in parentheses. Okay. Because that would be different than this here. Which would, uh, 5 raised to 0 would be 1, and you take the opposite, and you get negative 1. So anything, any number or algebraic expression, 2xy raised to the 0 is just 1. Anything raised to the 0 is 1. And then we have the negative exponent property. Basically, it says this here. A non-zero base raised to a negative ex exponent is equal to the reciprocal of the base raised to the opposite or positive exponent. In other words, if you have a negative exponent and you want to make that exponent positive, take the reciprocal, flip things over, and raise it to the positive power. That's all it says. So here we have 7 raised to the negative 2. They give us 7 raised to the negative 2. I can write that as a fraction. I can write 7 as 7 over 1 raised to the negative 2. It has a negative exponent. If I want to make that exponent positive, I just take the reciprocal of 7 over 1, which is 1 over 7, and raise it to the second. And 1 raised to the second is just 1. And then 7 raised to the second. And so this would be 1 over 49. 8 raised to the minus 1. I can write that as 8 over 1 raised to the minus 1. If I want to make that exponent um, positive, I take the reciprocal of 8 over 1, which will be 1 over 8, raise it to the positive exponent, and that's just 1 8. 5 raised to negative 3. So I can write that 5 over 1 raised to negative 3. If I want to <laughs> Write that with positive exponents. I take the reciprocal of 5 over 1. 1 over 5 raised to the third. 1 to the th raised to the third is just 1. And then 5 raised to the third. And this will be 1 over 25. 125. And then the next one. 1 half raised to the minus 2. Well, the reciprocal of 1 over 2 is 2, ra 2 over 1. I'll raise that to the second. Okay, when I take the reciprocal, I change the sign of the exponent. And so this is going to be 2 squared 
over 1 squared or just 1, and also this would just equal 4. And then finally, um, 2 over 3 raised to negative 3, if I want to write that with positive exponents, that will be 3 over 2 raised to the third. So that will be 3 to the third over 2 to the third, which will be, what's that, 27 over 8. All right. So they're very important, a negative exponent property, the most important property we will work with in this chapter. Know how to work with negative exponents. Because everything that you will write will have to be with fractions, no decimals. All right, so now we'll get into actually the heart and soul of this chapter, graphing inverses of exponential functions. Okay, so we determine the inverse functions for the simple algebraic ones. The inverse of x plus 6 is x minus 6. The inverse of 2x is x over 2. The inverse of x minus 7 is x plus 7. The inverse of x over 4 is 4x. Those are the simple ones. We need to understand or know, and this is one of the most important things in this chapter, what is the inverse function for exponential functions. We won't know that right now, but we can still graph them. So let's say here I have a function. It's an exponential function. My base is 2. A is 1. Okay, so it's f of x is equal to 2 raised to the x. Now, for your homework, I want you to choose these points for x. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. 2 raised to the minus 3 is 1 over 2 to the third, which is 1 over 8. 2 raised to the minus 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. 2 raised to the minus 1 is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the second is 4. 2 to the third is 8. And so I graph that function. Okay. Negative 3, I had 1 eighths. Negative 2, I had 1 fourths. Negative 1, I had 1 half. At 0, I have my y-intercept. At 1, I have 2. At 2, I have 4. And so there's my graph right there. All right? There's a graph. So this is f of x equals 2 raised to the x. Good. Now, what's the inverse function? We don't know that now, but we'll find that out. But nonetheless, I can still graph it because if to graph the inverse function, you just switch the x and the y's or the domain and the range. Okay, so my output for 2 raised to the x was 1 eighth. That will be my input for my inverse. So, so my input for my inverse, that will be 1 eighth. Again, we switch the x and y's, the domain and the range. The range now becomes a domain. And so this will be 1 fourth. This would be 1 half. This would be 1, 2, 4, and 8. And then the output for my inverse function was the input for my original function. So again, we switch this. So this, the x has now become the y's. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. We just switch the x and y's. Okay, so again, my input here became my output here for my inverse. My output became my input for the inverse. And now I can graph it. Okay, so at 1 8 I'm at negative 3. So and I know these get to be kind of difficult to graph. So 1 8 I'm about at negative 3. And then at 1 4 I'm about negative 2. And then 1 half, I'm at negative 1. But there at 1, I'm at 0. And then at 2, I'm at 1. At 4, I'm at 2. And at 8, I'm at 3. So 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm at 3. And there would be, so there would be my inverse function graphed.
Uh, we don't know what that function is. But I want you to notice too though it is symmetric because when you graph a function in its inverse it's always symmetric with respect to the line y is equal to x. So here it's always symmetric with respect to that line. It's like we flip the graph over the line y is equal to x. And then I'll do one more. All right, so let's look at this one. So here my function was f of x is equal to one third raised to the x. So again, I'll use the same x values, negative three, negative two, negative one. So one third raised to the minus three, take the reciprocal, raise things to the even um, exponent. That's gonna be three over one raised to the third. That will give me 27. One third raised to the minus two would be three over one squared. That would be nine. One third raised to the minus one will be three over one or three. One third to the zero is one. One third to the one is one third. One third squared is one ninth. And one third cubed is one twenty seventh. And then when I graph that, so when I graph that, it will look like this here. Okay, so again, there's my function f of x equals one third raised to the x. It's the decaying function. My base is less than one. And now to graph the inverse, all we do is we switch the domain and range. Okay, so my so my input here will become my output. My domain becomes my range. So this will be minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, and three. And then my output from my original function becomes my input to the inverse. So this will be, what's that, 27. So this will be 27, 9, 3, 1, 1 third, 1 ninth, and 1 over 27. All right. All we do is we switch the domain and range. We switch the x and y's. Pretty easy to do. And then now we can graph that. So at 27, at x is 27, I'm at negative 3. I can't graph that, that's for sure. At 9, I'm at negative. Okay, here, let me do this. I'm going to start from the bottom. At 1 over 27, I'm at 3, so that's going to be very close to 0. So. So 1 over 27, I'm at 3. 1, 2, 3, it's about right there. And then 1 ninth, I'm at 2. At 1 ninth, I'm at 2. So 1 ninth, I'm at about 2. Again, these things get to be very difficult. 1 third, I'm at 1. So 1 third, I'm about at 1. And then at 1, I'm at 0. And at 3, I'm at negative 1. And then at 9, I'm at negative 2. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Negative 2. And then I'm off the chart there. So when I graph this, it's going to look like this here. Um, I won't cross that line. Now these get to be very difficult to graph. All right, and so that's the way that one will kind of look like there. But nonetheless, it's still going to be symmetric to, with respect to the line y is equal to x. Yeah. All right, so that's what you'll have for homework. You'll have to graph. You'll have some problems to do graphing of the function in its inverse and then finding um, writing um, negative exponents with positive exponents. That's going to be very important. All right.